Hello, Brenda Gunderson bringing you your next Stats 250 Friday Focus. Now in Michigan this week, we did have a couple of warmer and nicer days with a little sunshine out there. And on one of those days, I stepped outside in my backyard and I did what's called a four-point breathing exercise. This is something I read in some article about how to bring some calm into your lives, and so I tried it. And I used to turn to the north and close my eyes and take some long, deep breaths in and out, and then to turn to the south and the west and the east. And that actually did help me find a few moments of calm. And then I went back inside and went back to work, continuing to work on items that we wanted to share with you for this coming week ahead. So I do hope that you are finding small ways to get outside, to keep moving, to find some pockets of calm in your day, and to stay positive. And today I want to share with you some of the details of what your Virtual Stats 250 experience will look like in this upcoming week. Of course, this is an exam week, exam two coming up, but I hope you noticed that there was no pre-lab assignment open for this week due on Monday, that there is no new homework assignment opening up on Friday, that there will not be any new topics covered in these pre-recorded lecture videos for this week, and there is no required lab or lab wrap-up quiz. We are skipping the content from chapter 10. We took the bulk of chapter 10 out, only covered the first page and a half with the big idea, and therefore we're skipping lab 10 and skipping pre-lab 10. Instead, we'll get to focus this week on getting ready for exam two. Now you do have one assignment that is open. It's that MWrite Prompt to Revision, Writers of the Ride survey. So, if you have not yet, make use of that feedback from your writing fellows and your peers and revise that memorandum and upload your revision before Sunday night, 4.59 p.m. Now your memorandum is to include some interpretations that are around confidence intervals and hypothesis testing, which are certainly exam two concepts. All right, let's turn to some exam two details. Now, exam two is certainly taking place on Thursday, April 2nd, starting at 6 p.m. And this is our same original day and time of our exam two. That's 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. This exam will be given online. It'll be given through coursework, your homework tool. Right now, you have a recommended and a required set of categories for types of assignment, and you'll soon have one that is for exams. This online exam will be timed. We usually have 90 minutes for a semester exam as we did for exam one, but we're going to tack on an extra 15 minutes as a buffer, so an hour and 45 minutes in length. Now if you have any special accommodations, you've likely been communicating with Elaine Henry, and she has set up an announcement that will go out this afternoon that will allow for people to let us know if you have a change in your special accommodations or any other issues. So watch for that announcement if that pertains to you. The exam too is going to be open notes and open book, but no collaboration with others inside the course or otherwise. You certainly can have your calculator out, but this exam is going to be formula light, symbol light, calculator light. You're not going to have to do a lot of heavy calculations. You are not going to have to type up an extensive formula or symbols. Now in your explanation for one of the questions, if you want to be able to include the population mean, well we do have in coursework that template of special symbols, that omega sign, that leads you to a set of symbols that are very common and x bar p hat, and the Greek letter mu is there. Well, you also can just type mu for mu, population mean, or p hat, or p with a hat over it instead. And we're also not going to have any uploads of pictures or images. So we're not going to be having you draw a picture on a piece of paper and shade in and have to take an image of that to upload. 
we might instead have pictures for you and a question behind that to select the right appropriate picture and you have to write an explanation for that. Now I do want to already give you what are questions one and questions two on the exam. Question one is going to be the set of exam instructions. Question two will be an academic integrity statement. And on the exam, we're going to ask you to type your full name as an answer to confirm you've read and understand those instructions in that statement. Now you're going to see the same set of instructions and statement on a practice exam. We'll be putting a practice exam up on coursework by Monday, 5 p.m. for you to use. A little bit more on that coming up. Now I do want to share one item from the instructions that maybe you even want to jot down some of this information right now. It has here that if you're experiencing an issue or difficulty, you can email us and we've set up an email group to reach the full instructor team or text or call at a given number. So you might want to take a moment and write this information down now so it's on a piece of paper or post it so that in the event if something does happen you are able to use one of those two ways to communicate with us. All right we're going to do a little video of the day. Many of you know I have a daughter who is in college. She's a senior and will be graduating from Calvin College in May. She's a swimmer. And you know, we brought her home last week, moved her back home from her um, residence out there in Calvin. And when we did that, it was also the timing of when we would have been watching her swim at the NCAA championships. And so she was you know, certainly thinking about that. And we also then were reflecting back on, well, what was then your last swim experience with your swim team? And it was the conference championship back in February. And so we were looking at some of the videos and pictures. And there's one that just gives me goosebumps every time I watch it. It's my daughter anchoring the 200 medley relay. So she is the fourth swimmer. She'll be swimming the freestyle, 50 um, yards of the freestyle. Calvin is in lane four. And she has a kind of glow green suit on with a yellow cap, so you'll be able to pick her out. So let me show you that video. Thank you. 
very exciting indeed. So thank you for watching that video with me and certainly there are many many memories that we can still keep dear in our hearts. All right let's get back to the many resources that you have for practicing these exam two concepts. So we do have a pre-recorded lecture. It's actually a recorded lecture review. We'll walk you through in about an hour five review questions. There's also a pre-recorded overall review. So this is about an hour and a half. It would have been something like we would have held on Sunday before an exam, a walkthrough of a flow chart of the big ideas, along with seven review questions. We'll have a pre-recorded lab review, and also that lab review being covered in those live virtual labs running on Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll have three questions and a lab ticket for reviewing. We will also have a posted set of questions for practicing the concepts. These are going to be put up on that page on Canvas that we called practice exams in the past, but now they're just a set of questions for practicing these exam two concepts. Now your homework, both the required and recommended questions. You're going to focus on homeworks four through eight. And I want to especially remind you to look over those required homework questions that were graded based on just attempting the question, but not for accuracy. When you view your homework on coursework, and I went in as a test student, looked at homework six, which I didn't answer any of the questions on, so I have a zero, but any of the questions that were not graded for accuracy, but only for attempting, are highlighted for you in blue. So those would be ones to definitely look at, because you got full points on them, but you certainly need to still look over your answer that you wrote against the detailed explanations. And those recommended homeworks, maybe you've used some of them in the past, maybe not, but you do have then the opportunity to type in your answers to those recommended questions, so the practice using the tool and typing in some more. We have those lab worksheets and some supplements. I know for exam one, you use supplement number one those pages right before your labs, that supplement was all about one proportion. And right after that, there's a worksheet that's all about one mean. So that would be a good worksheet to try to work out, write up those different interpretations and statements, and then check them against the posted solutions. You have that name, that scenario practice tool. And I would include not only the five scenarios from these chapters five through nine, but also put in chapter 10, ANOVA. That way you can practice the name that scenario type of questions that could include an ANOVA, that comparing of three or more population means. And there's problem with that questions out there. Topics five through nine would be the ones to focus on. And your lab instructors are gonna to continue to reach out to you. They'll get in touch with you in some way. They might continue with lab check-ins or try some other options to reach out to connect to you during the week. The office hours have been running on Zoom I like Zoom much better than Canvas conferences, and so those will continue this week too. Now that practice exam that we'll put up on coursework, it'll be available starting on Monday, 5 p.m., and it's going to be the same instructions, the same format, the same style of your actual exam. We're gonna have it open throughout the whole week, so it's not gonna be able to be timed that means you'll decide when you want to make use of that resource to practice taking an exam and to take it having your own timer set. Now the solutions for the practice exam are going to be put up on Canvas because we're leaving that exam practice open the whole week so the solutions won't be on coursework. But once you are done, you can go in and check your solutions against those posted on Canvas. Now, as far as our main advice for the week, here's what we will say, switch it up. What I mean by that is before we wanted you to watch the recorded lectures to get that content and write it out in your course pack and then go on and try the lab material and the homework. But now we don't want you to watch those videos first. 
it would be great to try out those lecture review questions on your own first. The questions are all posted on Canvas under the review folder in files. And then take your sheet and watch the pre-recorded lecture where you can pause, rewind if you need to, and check out how you did. And listen to some of the tangent questions that might come up during that recorded review. You can also check your answers against the posted ones on Canvas, but do that after you've tried the workout yourself first. Repeat that same idea with the overall review questions and with the lab review questions. Intersperse the other resources we have for you for practicing and keep up the communication. So keep connecting with us in office hours. Attend those virtual lab reviews this week. Check in with your lab instructor when they're saying they're online and through email and continue to read the announcements that we'll be sharing with you. So on behalf of the full SATS 250 instructional team, please know that we are dedicated and working hard to make this online assessment reasonable and fair. We want to thank you for your hard work this past week. And thank you for taking the time to watch this SATS 250 Friday Focus. Take care and go blue.